Story number 178, Jesus warns against Herod. Now, who is Herod? Herod is the government leader. He was the governor or he was the Tirach or the ruler of the jurisdiction in which the Jewish people were residing in, in Galilee. Um, Herod would be akin to our day as speaking about the, the mayor or the governor, uh, but his representation would be government. So Jesus is given the warning about the way he rules. All right. Um, one of the things that we have seen, we've already seen Jesus talk about the religious structure of his day that was dominated by who? The scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees and he told us to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees in other words he said beware of their what their doctrine don't pay attention to what they're what they're uh, telling you um, as far as how they go about and do things but be focused on the actual writings that Moses have which they were the ones that were in charge of bringing forth to the people but uh, Jesus said that they were doing it uh, for a lot of other reasons other than just wanting people to know the truth, which is really what it should be about. Mm -hmm. Trying to just give people the truth. Can I, I, I can't make any wonderful promises. I can't tell you this is going to be spectacular or this is going to be that. All I can do is give you the what? The truth. truth. The scripture says that the truth will what? Jesus. Right? And if you want truth, you have to know who? Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus said when he was talking to Pilate, for this reason came I into the world that I would bear witness to the what? To, to the, the truth. truth. And I always say that if there is a truth that has to be declared, that means the truth is in the midst of what? Lies. lies. <laughs> so how do you decipher between the lies and the truth? The only reason we have the word counterfeit money is because they're what? There is. There's a reality. And so the scriptures often, quite often, talks about what? False prophets. So because of that, we have to make sure that we understand that there is a truth and there is an error uh, and there is falsehood. And I bring out error because there are some people that, that are not deliberately trying to be wrong, but they, they are just going incorrectly. Paul was one of those individuals. Paul believed that what he was doing was correct. Mm -hmm. but, but Paul had to be what? Enlightened. And Jesus said, Paul, you're going the wrong direction. You're kicking against the pricks. You're fighting me. Mm -hmm. And Paul had to be corrected by who? By, by Jesus. Jesus. So uh, just because a person is doing wrong, that don't mean they are wrong. It could mean that they're just in error. And the error can be fixed. Falsehood, purposely, uh, is a problem. And there are a lot of people that have that. So let's take a look and see what Jesus says about Herod. Story 178. Story 178. Jesus warns against Herod. At that hour, certain Pharisees came near, saying to him, Go and get away from here, for Herod wishes to kill you. And he said to them, Go, say to this fox, Behold, I cast out demons, and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I am finished. But it is necessary for me today and tomorrow and the following day to go on, because it is not possible for a prophet to perish apart from Jerusalem. There you go now. That's a um, very interesting dialogue. When you're keeping in mind what's going on, if you remember our, pr our prior lessons that Jesus had went down into Judea to uh, help, not so much to help, but to be part of the Passover celebration that they were having. And remember the Pharisees were wondering initially, is he going to come? Has anybody seen him? Is Jesus going to be around? But Jesus did come and he went into the town and he began to do what? To teach. And during his teaching, he was telling people that uh, you need to strive to go in at the what? Narrow door. Which means that if it's a narrow door, that means that there's, there's only what? A certain way you can get through it. Broad door, you can walk any kind of way. You can roll in sideways if you want to. 
but the narrow door you can't. And so, uh, and then Jesus said that there will be a lot of people that will say that they know him, but don't. And uh, he said that unfortunately these people will end up in a eternity where they are weeping and gnashing of teeth. So as he's talking and sharing this information, as he's going through uh, uh, Judea and in Jerusalem, it says that at that, at that hour a certain Pharisee came near, saying unto him, he t telling him to go get go your way, where Herod wishes to kill you. So now he's letting them know, you know, Herod wants to take your life. Now, one of the things that uh, that we have in our own selves is that that sense of foreboding. So when somebody tells you something, you go to the doctor, and the doctor say, "I just want to let you know that you got this going on, and look like you're going." You're going to be sick and you may die in two years. Well, nobody wants to hear that. No, but, that that's, but does that change your role as far as how you see God? I always see God as a what? As a healer. I always see God as a way maker. Um, you don't change in that aspect. And so when Jesus got this information, it didn't change what he was going to do. Because he recognized that no matter what Herod wanted to do, he is going to, I'm a, and what did he say? He said, I'm a, uh, he said, you go tell, first of all, that fox. What did they call Herod? A fox. Mm -hmm. Now, that fox represents what? One that's sly, manipulative, sneaky, mm -hmm. uh, always trying to find an angle. All right? Aren't you glad our politicians don't do that today? <laughs> you know, always trying to find a way to, 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 to get in, to look right, to look good, to... So he said, you go tell that fox, behold, uh, I cast out demons. So I'm, I'm going to do the what? What, I was, what I'm here to do. I'm going to cast out demons and perform cures. So he's going to heal and, and, and rebuke the devil today and tomorrow. I'll be here the entire time and then I'll be finished. But it is necessary for me today and, uh, and tomorrow and the following day to go because it is not possible for a prophet to perish apart from Jerusalem. So what he's saying is, Herod, I am going to die. And I'm going to die where? In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. <laughs> but it's not because you say I'm going to die. Right? So once again, when the doctor say, you know, something's going to happen to you. And, and the doctor, you, know, you may see that. But let me tell you something, doc. What you're telling me ain't no surprise to God. God ain't looking but down and go, did you hear? I, I didn't realize that he had... God ain't shocked. God knew before you knew. Amen. So when I go to God and tell God, well, God, did you hear what the doctor said? God's going to be like, really? I didn't No, God already knows. Mm -hmm. So there's no shock to him. And J Jesus knew. He knew that, that, that Herod wanted him dead. He also knew that these Pharisees once wanted him dead. So he's not shocked. So what is he going to do? I'm going to continue on doing what it is that I have to do. Um... Our relationship, because we we don't, none of us walk like Jesus. So, in Jesus' walk, he didn't have to make a change because of what was given to him. I can't say the same for, for, for me or for, for other people. Sometimes we do need to make a what? Change. A change. And so, sometimes God will use information that is shocking to us to help us to do what? Make a, change. Make a change. So I can't say that you need to do just what Jesus did. And Jesus said, I'm going to keep doing what I was doing. Because sometimes we'll get information because we do need to modify a little bit. We do need to make some kind of corrections or some, some sort of an adjustment. Let go of some things or add on some things. So keep that in mind. That, but what doesn't change is what God knows. Amen. See, God doesn't be caught by surprise. God knows what's going on. And so what you have to do a lot of times, and what I do, is when, these, when this information comes that may be shocking, and it comes, it, Jesus got this information from the Pharisee, a religious leader. You may get it from the doctor, or from a family member, or from a friend, or from a co-worker. You know, they told us they're going to let us go today. Well, nobody wants to hear you working. Nobody wants to hear that. But them telling us we go, we're going to let you, everybody go today, well... You know, I got to deal with it. I got to go to God. But when I go to God, I, I, I know God already what? Knows. He already knows. 
So therefore, I got like, okay, now I need to find out where you want me to go because you knew this was going to happen. So obviously, <laughs> there's some place I need to be moving towards. And I might not know where I need to be moving towards, but I got to co go to God to find out what? Where to go. Because obviously, the roadblock just got put right in front of me that I wasn't either prepared for or didn't see. And that roadblock was called no more employment here. And now I got to do what? Well, Lord, I, I can't go down this road. And so where do I go? And that's where we build that what? That trust and relationship with the Lord. Right? And we always have to keep that. The beauty of what Jesus has is that relationship is perfect and continuous. God always fulfills his end. Our end is the end that's sketchy and spotty and tattered. But yet at the same time, we're still doing what? Seeking to find his will. Seeking to, so, so God knows that when you go down that road six months from now, you'll be like, you know what? This was a good thing. This was a good thing. You know? I remember when they told, told us uh, because of certain things that you're gonna, we're going to cut your salary 15%. And I was like, and they said, but then will y'all be, y'all will be able to, to, uh, to apply for overtime because we're going to move you from exempt to hourly and we're cutting the salary 15%. And I was like, you know, I, I, I'm trying to figure out well, how you going, you know, 15% of your salary. But what I didn't see was that I look back on it now and I go, that was, that was the best thing mm -hmm. because they had to move us off of, off of exempt. An exempt person means you work and no matter how many hours you work, you just get paid just whatever it is that you get paid. And they moved us to hourly where you, you're clocking in. You basically got to put in, put in the time. Uh, but all the work that we've been, we do for those executives and different things turned out that the overtime was more than the 15% that they took. So even though from a base salary it was less, the actual salary became more. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you can call it what you want. Or here's a, here's, here's a base uh, $25 and, here, and here's actual 100 Which one you want? I think I'll take the actual 100 <laughs> You can keep the base. Well, the base is guaranteed, you know, but give me the actual. I, I don't mind doing that little extra for that. So I'm saying all that to say what? What about, what's my point with this? Is that j just like Jesus was not what taken by surprise, we can't know, we, we can't feel that God is ever taken by surprise by anything that we struggle with. Now we are, but we're not God. We don't know everything. We can, we can struggle with what to do, but God is not surprised. God knows. And that's when we lean on him. Lord, you know. I don't know what you're doing. We just what? We lean on him. We depend on him. We go to him. All right? And that's the beauty of that. All right. Any other questions or comments on, um, on 178? If not, we'll move to 179. Uh, the man with the dropsy. Let's take a listen to this. Story 179. The man with dropsy. And it came to pass, when he went into the house of a certain one of the rulers of the Pharisees, on a Sabbath to eat bread, that they were watching him. And behold, there was a certain man before him with dropsy. And Jesus answered and spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? And they were silent. And taking hold of him, he healed him and let him go. And answering them, he said, Which of you, if a donkey or ox falls into a pit, will not immediately pull it up on the Sabbath? And again, they were not able to answer him to these things. All right. So, now, he had already told the Pharisee previously that he's going to continue to do what? Cast out devils and perform cures. And so, what is he doing now? He's, he's healing folks, like he said he was going to do. All right, but now look at the circumstances of this. It says it came to pass when he went into the house of a certain one of the rulers of the Pharisees on the Sabbath. So he's eating with what? With one of the Pharisees. Who are the Pharisees? They are the what? The religious leaders of that day. They're the ones that run the, the synagogue and the temple, right? They're the ones that set the religious order and structure for the people. 
they're the so-called, you know, they would be equivalent to our you know, religious, religious leaders. leaders today. All right? And so, and, and they're the ones that uh, kind of set the tone for what the community accepts as, well, that's godly, and that's not godly. Okay? And so, one of the things that they really were beating into the mind of the people of their day is, you better not do anything that we have deemed as work on the what? Sabbath. On the Sabbath. If you do that, now they had risen the Sabbath up to a uh, an exam, to a uh, a qualifier of of righteousness. We can tell how godly and how righteous you are by watching what you do on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So if I come by on the Sabbath, I see you cutting your grass. Oh, look at that heathen out there cutting his grass on the Sabbath day. Don't make that kind of verba they had. You know, somebody out there, and so they they built into their structure actions and behavior when behavior is what Jesus covers because what is sin sin covers what your inappropriate what behavior your actions it also covers your inappropriate what thoughts your inappropriate motives sin covers that but the Pharisees were trying to be an accuser but now wait a minute who does the scripture say is the accuser of the brother? Satan. Satan. Satan accuses us to God. How often? Day and night. Day. Day and, night. and so now here are the, the Pharisees. They're looking for ways to point out. Now, one of the things that the Pharisees have is that when they can point out to you that you're not doing something, that puts you to what level compared to them? Beneath. All right, so you need to, I know you can't come up to my level. And that's the attitude that these Pharisees had. They had an attitude that, that we're more godly than you. And so when you need to know something about God, you ain't really ready, ready to go to God. You come to us, and then we'll go to God for you, which is um, the, the working of the Nickelodeon uh, uh uh, mindset, which Jesus said in the book of Revelation, that thing I what? I hate. He hates that. So, but you see them doing that. But Jesus points out to them as because they said they were what? Watching him. He was eating bread and they were what? What are they watching for? See what he's going to do. Let's see what he's he going to do. Because they want, they want to do what? They want to accuse, accuse him. him. Just like the devil does. So Jesus sees this man that had, the, that had the, the, the dropsy, and Jesus answered and spoke to the lawyers and the Pharisees. So he, he said before, he, he knew their what? Their motives. Mm -hmm. So he said, before he even did anything, he said, let me address what's in your heart. Let me, because I, I feel your spirit, and let me just tell you what you are thinking. So he says to them, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day or not? <laughs> so... Is it, is it wrong to do good on the Sabbath? And then he goes on. And he says, because they were what? They were silent. Because they had no answer. So let me tell you one thing. God can shut you up in a Amen. moment. <laughs> Remember when they, the woman was caught in adultery and Jesus said, okay, he did, did it without sin. Do what? Cast, Cast the first stone. stone. And then he went down and did what? Started writing on the ground. And then they didn't say anything else. Next thing you know, one by one, they're, mm -hmm. they're walking away. So, he, his ability to silence his critics is just, he's God. <laughs> That's Amen. why he can do that. And taking hold of him, he healed him uh, and let him go. So, he healed the man on the Sabbath, right in front of the religious leaders. So, one of the things the religious leaders can't say, they can't say he don't have power to heal. Because he did it right in front of his face. The man's got the power to heal somebody. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's a little bit more than a man. But that's what they don't want to admit. And answering, he said, Which of you, if a donkey or an ox falls into a pit, will not immediately pull it out on the Sabbath? So the whole, your whole concept is that you're saying, well, because the, the Mosaic law says you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. Now, that whole aspect of the Mosaic law was a concept of trust. 
And what God wanted us to recognize is that if you continue to trust in the fact that I'm going to work, I'm going to work, I'm going to work, I'm going to work, I'm going to build, I'm going to build, I'm going to build, I'm going to save, I'm going to save, I'm going to save. Well, he says, you're, you're not trusting in me. You're trusting in your what? Your own mm -hmm. efforts. Mm -hmm. Remember the man that, 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 that had the barns? Mm -hmm. and had all that stuff in there. And then he said, well, I don't know. It worked so much. I got more stuff. But my barns ain't got nowhere else to put it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tear down my little barns and build what? Bigger, Bigger barns. barns. And Jesus said to him, thou fool. Because all that work, now you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Now who's the stuff going to belong to? So the aspect of the Sabbath was given to us so that we would recognize that, that you can still make it even if you don't work that day. Some people feel, if I don't work that day, ooh, you know, I'm, I'm letting the day go by and I ain't make no money. The, the law of Moses, and so show you how bad these guys were, because they were so big on the Sabbath, but the law of Moses said, not only were you not supposed to work on the Sabbath, but every seventh year, you were supposed to not uh, plow the land. Mm -hmm. Just allow the land to come up as it will. Now, they didn't trust God for that. But they're going to they're gonna pick on the Sabbath, but they're not going to pick on, that they're not going to trust God for every seventh year. Mm -hmm. Don't plant no corn. Don't plant no, no, no wheat. Don't plant no barley. Just eat that of which comes up, what? By itself. So. Right? And then the following year, because you didn't plant that year, you do plant, but you still gotta what? Wait for that to come up. So you gotta you gotta trust God for all that time. So what does that what would that build into your mind? That though I do these activities, I recognize it's not the activities, it's not the planting of the corn, planting of the wheat that sustains me. It's God. But the activity is what I do, but it's God blessed. But even without the activity, my trust is not in the activity. My trust is where? In God. in God. And that's what they didn't have. And that's one of the things why Israel was, was when they were, as a nation, when they were drawn away into captivity, they were into captivity a year for every year they didn't let these, the, the land rest. Mm -hmm. And so, once again, so when you get into this aspect of the Sabbath, Jesus is pointing out to them, you're not doing it for the right reasons. And you're not pointing out the right things. This thing is not so you can accuse people. It's so people can learn to trust God. God. Mm. But you're using the Sabbath in the wrong aspect and for the wrong things. All right. And so um, it says that he just went on. Uh, uh, and, and again, they were what? Unable to answer him these things. So they didn't say anything. Because what? They don't have an answer. What you going to answer God when he questions you? What you going to say to him? I'm, 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 I'm gonna say, why, well, behind Jesus. <laughs> that's all you can do. <laughs> you gonna say he was he's incorrect? Mm -hmm. You gonna say, well, I think you need to think your facts are wrong? No, we're stay not. Stay under the blood of Jesus. Stay you under the you, blood. You, you, you help me. I stand in the in the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's all we can do. We we put on what? His righteousness. Right. All right, but these people are trying to make themselves look good, and so, and by doing that, in guy, in, in the eyes of God, they are making themselves look extremely hypocritical. All right, so um, let's go on into story one eighty. Humility. Let's take a listen. Story one eighty. Humility. And he spoke a parable to those invited noticing how they were selecting the primary places, saying to them, When you are called by anyone to marriage feasts, you should not sit in the primary place, lest a more honorable person than you might have been invited by him. And he who called you, when he comes, will say to you, Give the place to this one, and then you will occupy the last place with shame. But when you are called, Go and sit in the last place, so that when he who called you comes, he might say to you, Friend, come up higher. Then you will have glory before all those sitting with you, because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And he also said to him who invited him, When you make a dinner or a supper, don't call your friends nor your brothers, nor your kindred, 
nor rich neighbors, lest they might also invite you in return, and you might be repaid. But when you make a feast, call the poor, maimed, lame, and blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. For it will be repaid to you in the resurrection of the righteous. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Alright. Now, if you notice in this that uh, one of the things that this writer did, which I thought was kind of good, um, in this story of 180, notice where that statement, it is more blessed to give than to receive, comes from. Did you notice that? Comes from where? The book of Acts. Acts. Acts twenty thirty five. Because that statement of it's more blessed to give than, than it is to receive is not found in the actual four gospels. So a lot of times people go in there and they're trying to say, I know I know Jesus said that, but we gotta remember that Jesus did say some things in the what book? In the book of Acts. What other book did Jesus say things in? Revelation. Revelation, yeah. Jesus some people say, Well, Jesus never wrote anything. I go, oh, hey, wait a minute. So Jesus dictated to to John, John the, whole the whole book of Revelation. Revelation yeah. He said he, he he what he got it from the from the Father, and then he gave it to to the angels to give mm -hmm. to John. Mm -hmm. He told him to write. He told him to write. All right. So uh, I just wanted to make sure we point that out. That aspect that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. It actually comes from the book of Acts. And you would be looking for this in one of the. Gospels, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, as most people do. They look for it in the Gospels and it's not there. Yeah. All right. All right. But let's look at this. The humility. So he says he spoke a parable to those that were invited. So now he's once again, he's at that dinner. He said he's sitting down there with these all these, you know, sophisticated folks. And um, and he noticed. So what? What does that say? Jesus, what? He noticed. God is what? Paying attention. Is there anything that he doesn't notice? Is there anything that God doesn't pick up on? Jesus noticed how they were selecting the primary seat. So he's sitting there watching them all trying to, oh, let me get to this seat. Let me get to that. Oh, I'm going to sit next to this one. Do we? Do we? <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. <laughs> Yeah, they buddy. try. Everybody trying to get next to so and so. You mean get next to so and so? Right there with sitting right there. But I've sat there first, so I don't know. But it's one of those things where you're just sitting and you're looking at that, and you go, "Man, have I seen this before? Mm -hmm. Have we seen this picture? Yes. And we've seen it all places, mm -hmm. not just in church. You see it in the po in the political thing. Oh, yeah. You see it at work. Mm -hmm. I remember this one thing with this lady. I'm not gonna call her name, but. Man, she had got named to one of the uh, uh, vice senior vice president jobs, and uh, they, they were having the meeting. They had uh, our CEOs up there, and she was calling out the names of all the people. And I supported this person. This was one of the, the people that I that, that I was responsible for uh, for the technology, and I knew it, man. When they got to, to her, I just called her name. I mean, if, if you could stick an electric cord on her, she could have she could have powered the whole city of New York City. She had so much. <laughs> Call my name, <laughs> just beaming, man. And I and you you could tell it. You know, she was just so glad to be sitting there, and, and she called my name. She, she was just sitting there, and you can you can you can see it. You can almost smell it. It's like it's like you know. And so we we recognize that now. From a standpoint, do we do, have we ever been like that ourselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we've been there. That's part of what human nature. Well, you, know, you get there. One statement: If mm -hmm. that's if you was brought up righteousness from the family, then I think you can. If you own your own works that you do, yeah, I think I should can I should stand there mm -hmm. for my rights, you know, mm -hmm. and let the person go ahead and have their rights. Yeah, I mean, you can have everybody has that sense of pride about certain things, and like you said, if you're brought up a certain way, a lot of times what happens is your parents tell you, "Don't be sitting there looking all proud." <laughs> <laughs> they smack it at you in a minute, <laughs> but um, you get you learn how to be humble, how to be mm -hmm. you know, and that's something because the, the scripture says that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Mm -hmm. yeah, but what happens? The rod of correction drives it what far mm -hmm. from him. 
So yes, we all have that to a certain degree. But as you mature and as you get older, and especially when you learn the workings of Christ, you recognize that you need to show everybody that level of what? Of proper respect. And don't always put yourself above what? Mm -hmm. Other people. Mm -hmm. With, regardless as to what their circumstances are, there's some people that are in some mess. And no, I'm not going to get in the mess with them. I'm not going to do that. Amen. But at the same time, I'm not going to say, well, because they're in a mess, I'm a better person than them. No, I just happen to not be in the mess that they're in. Thank God. You know, you thank God for that. But you still look at them as what? Proper human beings that need God's help. Because if, he, if that person don't get God's help, then there's no way for them to recognize that they need the strength of God to get out of it. So proper uh, perspective on yourself and on others is basically what I'm trying to say. It's healthy. You need to have that. And you need, sometimes we need to have God to help us with that. But he noticed how they were all selecting the proper seats and says, and, and, uh, and he said to them, when you call anyone to a marriage feast, uh, you should not sit in the primary places, lest a more honorable person comes uh, uh, than you that has been invited. So when you sit there, don't just be sitting there and tell them, I'm going to sit in the best seat, because they may have somebody else more honorable come and is going to tell you to do what? Give up your seat. <laughs> Give up your seat. And then now you're going to walk out of there with what? With shame because you had to go take the what? The lower seat. So he says, but when you are called, go and sit in the last place. So that when he, he comes to call you, he might say to you, friend, come up hither. He says, and then you'll have uh, the proper honor and the proper uh, re recognition that you, does, that you are what? Supposed to have. Because there's nothing wrong with recognizing somebody in their what? In their proper time. And when somebody does something and accomplishes something, you, you recognize it. You, this, this brother go to school, he get his degree, you know, then it's a proper time to do what? To recognize it. He's like, hey, we we'll can call your name up, come on up, here's your degree. But you can't walk in there two weeks into the school, you know, and then, you know, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk across the stage and I want, I want my degree. Well, wait a minute. So number one, it ain't time. Mm -hmm. Number two, you ain't earn it. You know, and this ain't the so. But some people want it what all the time. Yeah. I want everybody to always see me as what the it. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that we don't uh, fall into those things. So that that humility aspect about what Jesus uh, has and what he wants those that follow him to have, because if when you know that you know in your heart the truth. Um, you can't walk around. I know the truth, and you don't. That, that's then I begin to wonder: Do you really know the truth? Because if you knew the truth, you would know not to what to, to walk around making other people feel ashamed. That's like having a whole bunch of money going up to to somebody that's in the bread line and just saying, "Yeah, I know y'all wish I had this kind of money, don't you?" I mean, that's what that's 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 borderline evil. So um, when a person has that. Then you are in danger, in my opinion, of being part of those individuals to say, Lord, haven't we done all these wonderful works in your name? And he's going to say to what? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So we want to be careful with that. There's a lot of people doing a lot of religious activities and a lot of the religious things, but God don't know them. And that's the, the thing that we got to make sure that, that, that God knows us. Not so much that we walk around talking about we know God. But then he goes on. He says, but everyone who exalts himself will be humble. How many people? Everyone. Oh, okay. So if God, if Jesus say everyone, what does that mean? Everyone. everyone. And, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. All right. And so, and I find it interesting that it doesn't say everyone that humbles himself. It says he who humbles himself. So... So even the, the part of the humility is that you can do it even if you're not what? Exalted. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be exalted. Right. So you keep that in mind and you, you look at the, the aspect of how the language actually uh, is said there. And, it, and he goes on and says, and he also said to him who invited him, when you make a dinner or a supper, 
don't call your friends or your brothers uh, nor your kindred nor your neighbors why why don't you want to call because less they might also invite you in return and you uh, might be repaid so what is he saying he's saying when you have all these different events and these banquets and stuff why invite these people who you know well when I invite them they gonna come in, and then not, then then they gonna invite me. Then I'm gonna go there, and then we gonna invite him, and then he gonna come here. And all y'all doing is exchanging the money and the food back and forth between right. the, between the same group. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, but but now he said, if you want to have something and do something for people that you know what can't pay you back. Mm -hmm. Look what he says. He says, uh, mm -hmm. but when you make a feast, call the poor, mm -hmm. the main the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. Now, wait a minute. Well, how are you going to be blessed if they cannot repay you? Because God is going to bless you. God's going to bless you. God will never be indebted to anybody. That's what he said in his word. He will, to no he will not. Pay every man according He's going to pay. Mm -hmm. And so when you create a banquet and the people that, that can afford come and they pay you back for what you've done for them you got your what Just your reward. you got your reward mm -hmm. and you got it from who from man, mm -hmm. man. now do you want to get paid by man mm -hmm. or do you want to get paid by God ah, no. I think I'd rather have God's currency mm -hmm. God's currency comes in a lot of different ways other than just you know 20s and 30s and you know God's currency comes in a lot of things it comes in a clear mind mm -hmm. good heart mm -hmm. comes in a good health good spirit Comes in wisdom, comes yeah. in joy, mm -hmm. comes in you know all the all that comes in, and then and then at the end it's all everlasting life, mm -hmm. eternity with Him, Amen. in His presence. Right. That's God's currency. Yeah. I prefer that over any. Amen. He goes. Um, Amen. So you invite these people that can't pay you back, for it is, uh, for it will be repaid you in the resurrection of the what. Of the righteous. And then as we stated from Acts 20 and 35. Jesus said. It is more blessed. To give. Than it is to receive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important aspect. Of what it is that, that we are doing. Alright. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to get one more in here. Story number. Any other questions on that? Yes I have to depart. Oh, okay, okay man. Okay. Okay. Is this 12? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, maybe, maybe we are done. Mm -hmm. okay. well, I looked at the clock. I'm looking at it wrong. So maybe we are done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, so, in, in concluding this, I think one of the things that we can, we can get an understanding of is that having a humility and a care properly. So, don't be so concerned about trying to be, is it the Sabbath? So, you know, I got to look right. No, help people when you can what? Help people. All right? Showing proper humility and being able to recognize that do you want to get repaid by man or do you want to get repaid by God? And we, what it says about the Sabbath, Sabbath was not made for, was not made for, uh, for man, but man was made for for the Sabbath. No, no, the, man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath, Sabbath was made, made for man. So it's important that we keep that in mind that uh, we don't, we can't become a slave of these institutional doctrines, which a lot of times happens, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. People write these bylaws and these laws, which the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees did, and they enslaved the people by that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, we thank God for that. Um, and